I use markers. Very sophisticated stuff. So I know as the frames go back to the same one, I use color coding. Okay, this is now, so it's probably about half capped. So we will take this and we'll extract it. The next is nearly capped too. If it was middle of summer, I wouldn't take it. I would wait a bit longer because uh, I li really like it to be as capped as much as possible. But this, this is okay. Now I'll brush off the, I'll brush off the leaves. Oh, of course, stir them up a little bit. I can tell by the white of the frame how much honey is in it about. And um, from that I judge too, not just the capping. There, if they want to ripen the honey and this one here is okay. Quite a few beetles brush off. And then, generally then, when they brush off, I can kill them on the, the base there. Or, so try to get as many bees off as possible, as we don't get them inside. The last few I have to blow off a bit. And this is again color coded for comparison. Now we look at the next frame. Bit of smoke. And try not to kill any bees. Capping is what the honey, the, the nectar of which the bees are collecting has a fairly high moisture content. The bees are pre-digesting the nectar and, and this is not very good, it's an old frame too, but it's still reasonable to keep it. And when then they have to have brought the honey, the moisture level in the honey to about 16%, they will put a wax cap on top. And once it's capped, of course, no moisture can be added to it anymore. And it can be stored indefinitely. I have to watch to take either four or six or eight frames out of it. And I want to make sure all the time that I leave enough honey for the bees. And at the moment, the way the honey flow is, I have no concern there. And now if you think this is only September 12, uh, in the Southern Hemisphere here, it's of course only the beginning of spring. And it's amazing to get this flow, but that's when our trees are flowering. So at the moment, clover is everywhere. It's snow mm. white along the roads and the polonias, the blue gums are just finishing. And then if you look around, you know, the blue tops are flowering. Also, the farmer's friends, the cobbler's pegs are also flowering. It makes an excellent honey. We brush them away from us. These are actually queen cells that started, but since there's no queen up here, they gave up again. But obviously, thinking about swarming as well, and maybe have swarmed. Hold them at the top, in my case being a right handed, my left hand, I hold as firmly as I can lift the frame and make sure that where I brush the bees, I don't walk or nobody walks there and squashes them. So I take them well away. Yeah. But they will get up and fly off again unharmed. The big bee givers don't use this brush, they use a blower. Or they just shake them. So I've got four frames. I have to make now a decision, do I want to take more? Over that I have a look at what the next frames are. And to me it looks like perfectly okay to take another two. And then we'll reassess it again. Sometimes people will just take them on like this, which is okay too. It's quicker. And, uh, but I think it stirs them up a bit more. This is marginal now to take this, but I can see the cells are fairly full there. So I'll take it. I would say this it has swarmed not too long ago, but since there is a, such a good flow, that's just been filling it up again. Mm. And I would say it's quite a good chance within a month we'll take more honey off. So six frames, very few bees. Very few bees marked green and 
what I now do is I use the, what is called the American Hive tool and I scrape the base where the, the frames go back simply in preparation for when I bring the empty frames back and if we look down here we're looking down into the brood box and this is the queen excluder down here and has a little bit of spilled up comb but not much so it's all ready and when I now put the, the lid back on I don't put the inner lid on I just put the lid on and I try to again squash as few as possible the smoke will drive them down a bit so I use a, I used a smoker a bit like a brush and I put it on at an angle and then slowly twist it and by doing that I hopefully haven't killed any now uh, just for the record what I do is I mark the date the day being the 12th of the 9th and I took six frames and uh, these bees here as you can see by the number of bees obviously doing well I just this reminds me next time mm -hmm. that they've been strong so when I look for honey this is the first one I'll come to so at the moment we will leave this we take this back to the honey shed and we'll do the uncapping and then the extracting you take you take the caps off so this is the caps see how that's been capped so you just take that little bit off and then it's ready to spin so Thank this you. is this is the honey extractor ready Yeah. Yeah. We've now have uncapped and extracted the honey and we're bringing back the empty frames again now for the bees to go and collect more honey for us. And this can happen sometimes very quickly. And when we lift the lid, we have to be a little bit careful because they can see it like they're done here. They build into the lid because they're running out of space because we've taken them, mm. the frames away. So we just shake it mm -hmm. in here. Sometimes they can fly mm -hmm. up into the air and can be quite dramatic, but not today. And make sure we don't squash them. Every bee is precious. And, uh, and again, make sure the smoker goes well. And I smoke them just for them to disperse a bit. Because if I bring then the frames in, I uh, try not to squash them. This is not an exactly good frame. You can see now where it's been uncapped. Mm. And uh, and it's often quite easy to get two at a time, but when there's so many bees, it's just better to be careful rather than fast. So where the where the the comb has been uncapped, they'll repair that. They'll repair that yeah. by tonight, wow. and they will bring in honey again. Now, as we talk let's, let's just don't muck around <laughs> at the moment luckily we have relatively few small hive beetles because the weather is not humid and it's not hot so we've got the frames in here now it's really important as we space them out evenly I try not to use too much smoke and some people maybe would use even less than I do but most people probably use a bit more. The hive tool is really good, we can use it to pull for the space 
where there's too much space like this or we can use it we can use it to push as well but this like we can just but this is attached but this one here like this this is not down properly so we can pull it down this is really important for next time when we take honey out even spacing means even combs and in here we only have nine combs now start off with ten then take one out as they it sort of bulges a bit it makes the uncapping much easier so this is pretty even I'm happy with this then I've got the small hive traps the beetle traps small hive beetle traps just place them back in here again without forcing anything just gently looking for a, a gap here maybe that's all good all right. the next is the inner lid when the inner lid is a bit waxed up it's worthwhile to just take off it's just smoother again if it's essential or not it's another question. It's just something I've always done and it has worked for me. I like the beetles to be, the bees to be inside. Put this on. It's just a bit of three ply, but you can use cardboard. You could use lino, ending flat. Now we've got a bit of bees mm. in here and we haven't got a brush with us at the moment. So I just try to reduce the numbers there. And then when I put it down, I put it down like a, a hinge. And slowly put it down and push it slightly forward. And hopefully the bees have been able to duck away. And once it's down, I don't lift it up anymore. It's, it's, I often find when I have people helping me, they see as a bee is trapped and they lift it to let that bee out and when you let it down you probably trap another two. Yes, so it's not yeah. worth doing. Mm. So this is done, I make sure there's no rubbish in the front and this is done. We're using glass and we're reusing these jars. People buy the honey from us and then return the glass jars and we give them a dollar. We wash them and sterilize them and they can reuse them again. It's by doing this the same jar can be used many many times whereas if you use plastic it's probably going to be thrown away. So we like to recycle it. And the honey has just come from the bees this morning and has been screened. Not through a very small screen because you like to have the pollen in the honey and all we do is bottle it in glass and that's it. Straight from the bee to the customer. When the honey comes from the bees, we just put it through the screen like this. It's 1 16th of an inch, so a bit more than a, a millimeter screen. This is the smallest screen we use. And the idea is to take out the bees knees, but not the pollen. And then when you look at the honey, you find that it's actually cloudy. And the reason it is cloudy at the moment it has air bubbles because I just filled it up but it will be cloudy because the pollen is still in there and of course the pollen is part of the nutritional value of our honey and we don't heat the honey most of the honey is heated to about 72 degrees celsius which destroys all the enzymes this one here will eventually crystallize and people are not used to that anymore and and yet it's beautiful when it's crystallized it's a really beautiful honey like this so it's a natural food from the bee to you without anything added to it nothing taken away and nothing alterated